Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button for me. Also leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And as an added bonus, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music. Just like this, we're going to take a look at uh, Pussifer, Existential Reckoning. And this is their first album in five years. Um, it was actually originally released digitally on October 30th of 2020, but the CD or the physical media format of this CD vinyl uh, just came out December 11th of 2020, which is why I'm just getting around to reviewing it now. Um, so, you know, the history of this band is an odd one, but, uh, you know, most famous for featuring Tool and a Perfect Circle frontman, Manor James Keenan. And that's where they get most of the publicity around them. But it's an art rock side project with a revolving door of members uh, that is featured in the past. Uh, Tim Alexander of Primus on drums, Trey Gunn from King Crimson on guitar, Johnny Polanski, who's known for doing a lot of production work as well as solo work uh, on piano. Um, however, the only constant member in this is Mannard, which again is why he gets probably most of the recognition for it. But the current recording lineup for this album here also features Matt Mitchell on guitar, bass, and keyboards. And he's appeared on all four of their studio albums. Then we've got Karina Round on vocals and keyboards, and she's appeared on the last three of the band's studio albums. Then we've got Greg Edwards, guitar, bass, and keyboards, and Gunnar Olsen on drums, as well as Sarah Jones on drums. And uh, so the band released their debut album, V is for Vagina, back in 2007. As I said, this is the fourth studio album here. And the band's original name, or what they were going to go by, was Umlaut, which uh, is the same as those two dots that are over the Motley Crue name, if you're wondering what that is. And they were described originally as a premier improvisational hardcore band. And I don't know if that's maybe the best description for them, but um, the name Pussifer itself first appeared in an HBO sketch comedy show called Mr. Show that featured an episode with both Mannard and his tool bandmate Adam Jones in the show. Otherwise, there's been no real explanation as to what Pussifer means and or where it comes from, why they chose it, anything like that. And of course, leave it to uh, Mannard to keep things uh, uh, mystical and secretive the way that he often is. But the band's sound, I think, can best be described as synth-laden electronic art rock. Um, the foundation of which for their music is built around electronic sounds and comparable to um, 80s new wave and some modern rock bands, the vocals themselves are what's providing the melodic element to the sound. And for me, I think it provides a really interesting listen. Uh, for me, this album here pulled me in right from the start in a way that their other albums had never quite been able to do. And while I think, you know, again, you know, Mannard gets most of the credit um, and attention due to the success of his other bands, I do think that both core members, Matt Mitchell and Karina Round, uh, deserve the spotlight as well. They flesh out the songs, adding a unique, complex, multi-layered uh, approach that provides that foundation for what Mannard is able to do. A few of the tracks that I want to talk about it that I think are standout tracks, we got track one, it's called Bread and Circus. Uh, the opening keyboard riff and modulation on the song for me immediately sets the tone for the entirety of the album that has a very um, even feel to it throughout. And for me, that's a good thing on this one. It's their most consistent sounding album that they have put out. Track two. Um, called Apocalyptical, and it was the first single. It's probably my fam or favorite track off of the album. What I really enjoy about this is that counterbalance of the chugging instrumentation along with the vocals on this one. Then track three, The Underwhelming. This one here mixes uh, some robotic sounds in with it with keyboard balancing out between uh, some upfront uh, guitar riffing that I think is some of the best on the album here. Then track four, Gray Area. Uh, this one here has a goth rock club feel to it, uh, but it also mixes in some industrial elements 
uh, in this track that you, you can feel throughout some of the other songs on here as well. And then another track that I really like on here is track number seven, uh, Bullet Train to Iowa. And this one here, I think Mannard's vocals on this one are probably the closest to any of his Tool performances. And so if you're a Tool fan wanting to explore this for the first time, maybe check out track seven to get you going. Let's take a look at this. I really like the artwork on this one. As you can see, the albums there behind me on the, the bottom tier, sometimes they're a bit uh, silly in a way or comical that go along with that art rock band feel. And this one still has a little bit of it, of course, mixing in the aliens and whatnot. But I, I like this album cover and I think it's a really interesting uh, appearance uh, you know, to look at and whatnot. There's the inside of it. And then behind here is the booklet. And uh, not much in the way of the booklet. We have the front cover, of course, and then we get a breakdown of the tracks and who plays on it and the back cover. So unfortunately, no band photos or anything like that as part of this. Um, but then again, the band has always been uh, shrouded in that uh, sort of mystery as to who they are, what they are, and that sort of stuff. So I kind of get it. But bottom line on this album here, I think it's a testament to Mannard's talents. For me, this fourth album is uh, the best in their catalog. I really, really do enjoy this album here. To, for me, again, finally raising the bar on what this band does to be on par with what it is that Manor does and his other bands like Tool in a Perfect Circle. However, if you are expecting the sounds of what he does in Tool in a Perfect Circle, you're not gonna find those here. Uh, there's only small hints of those bands brought into this uh, that sort of provide the periphery of what it is uh, that you're gonna get here. But instead, I think if you're open to the sort of synth-laden new wave 80s uh, electronic sound, like bands like Depeche Mode and New Order, Joy Division, stuff like that, I think you are gonna enjoy this. In my opinion, this album here does it perfectly and is totally worth checking out. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, please leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you feel about this. Let me know if you're a Tool fan or you come from another uh, you know, area in music uh, to this band, how it is that you found this band. All right, uh, everyone take care, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye, everyone.